Uh, uh, hello everybody, welcome to the Variable Resistance live stream. Let's get going here. Alright, so uh, this week I'm gonna spend a way less time on my week where I just went on for hours and hours and hours. And, and uh, we're gonna take a look at, at some fun things you can do with servos. Uh, um, we'll talk about the TNC again a little bit. Um, and let's, let's just jump right into it. So, what I wanted to show you guys for, for um, the start is something that I've been working on for fun for, for um, photography purposes. And just get everything. cigar box, a great little project box. I still have it connected to the computer uh, for power, but you can add a battery in here. And, and uh, what this is, is uh, this little kit you can get from a lot of different types of robot stores. And what it does, it looks like a stream just locked up a bit there. Sorry about that. Uh, um, this is basically two servos here. So you can see there's one here. On one in the case itself, and when I control these two axes, I essentially get X Y motion. So two different axes of motion, and when used in comparison or used at the same time, it's going to essentially do a tan and tan tilt tilt and pan of whatever is mounted to the top of this. So, so you'll see there's like a, a very, very simple hole at the top, which you can just stick a, uh, a, a nut with the you know, right size uh, um, a thread for a camera. Uh, you could also, you know, one out whatever you want uh, onto that. So, what do we have here? Comes with a couple different things. Oh, there's actually one other thing I want to show you with this too. I have a toggle switch here. And when I flip this into this other mode and hit this button, what I wanted to be able to do is do uh, a bunch of different shots that I then stitch together later, and um, you know, just do some giant panoramic that way. I also wanted to set up the camera, which is another thing over another week. Use the TNC as an, uh, an inter intervalometer uh, to actually trigger the camera to go. So essentially move the servos around, move the pan, the pan and tilt around, and then get it in position, take a bunch of pictures for your HDR, for your high dynamic range, at different exposures, and then slightly change the tilt, you do it again, change it again, do it again, then change the pan a little bit, go through that whole series, and you end up with a bunch of photos that you can stage later, and then a bunch of uh, different configurations, and then do uh, an HDR. The composition from. So when I press this button, this, this is just this test sequence. And you can see that it'll walk you through. It's walking you through very quickly. This would be very slow. And it would also be triggering the camera here and there. So, so one, of the, one of the problems that I came uh, into with this particular setup is, is that these servos don't have quite wide enough to work for. Uh, a large scale camera like a, a, a digital XLR. But, but um, let's see, this so if I can toggle that on and off with that button, and then if I flip with switch, and I go back to having a manual control. So, so uh, if we look at the guts, this guy, what you're going to see is. There's not much in here, actually. There's just a teensy connected to the computer right now. And then the two servos are basically just connected to power and ground. And then connected to the teensy. And if you had higher power servos, you need to run that into a transistor or something to amplify that power. And then the switches are um, going directly into the 
Arduino with um, some uh, resistors in place that help to uh, essentially uh, ground it when it's not connected. So it doesn't. If you have a floating switch, essentially a floating wire, it can uh, trigger itself on and off um, over and over and over. So uh, um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Oh, and then these two things are potentiometers. Those are our, our dials. And those are uh, very similar to the servo. Those are three wires. The two of them go to power and ground, or to your reference voltage and ground. And the third one uh, goes into your analoging of the DNC. So, very simple. Uh, in terms of the electronics, there's not a lot of uh, discrete components on the board or whatever. So, taking a look at this in a simplified way, what I'm going to do is just walk through the process of connecting TNC to a couple of parts. Here's our potentiometer. This allows us to have an analog value from uh, it's a 10 bit number, so from 0 to uh, 1023, 1024, 1024 values. Uh, 0 to 1023. And then the servo over here. And, and uh, there's also an onboard LED on this guy. So <clears throat> if we unplug the board that I have running over here and plug in this guy, you'll see that I have a little test pattern on the team to see that's just blinking. It's pretty standard for any uh, bare bones electronic, electronic kit. You know, so just get the blinky going, and that helps you uh, figure out that you're making the correct connection as to the device. <coughs> so let's uh, step into the desktop here, and we'll um, take a look. Hoping that um, this is working correctly because it's going to locked up a bit here. Yes, okay. I'm going to close my chat window. <laughs> Alright, so um, uh, there's two things involved with, with running TNC uh, at, in the Arduino platform. You're going to want to download Arduino, of course. And then you're going to want to uh, go, go to PGRC and download TNC Duino. Uh, it's a, that's a essentially a plugin that installs on top of the existing Arduino package and uh, to give you access to the TNC. Since it doesn't technically have the exact same components in it that the, that the um, standard Arduino do, uh, this is a handy thing. Uh, that's kind of an essential thing that you need to have to um, get, get these things talking to one another. So, uh, once you've done that, once you've installed the Arduino, it goes into the applications or folder. It's a little different on PC, but there's instructions on the website for how to do this. Uh, uh, once you have that in the right place, uh, then it's uh, a matter of installing the TNC Arduino software, which will look for the existing Arduino install and install it on top. After which, when you open Arduino, very similar to processing, which we were talking about before. Uh, you're going to have uh, a very similar, uh, very similar window to processing, a little greener, a little less blue. Uh, um, this is actually C++ versus Java, which is what processing is written in. I haven't really, really walked you through anything processing related in here, but if you haven't done any of that. Uh, um, and then, if you're on the Arduino website, if you go to the reference page, it's going to show you all of the different things that you can use with the standard uh, Arduino uh, uh, code set. There's also a lot of uh, things you get for free with, with uh, the C++ uh, uh, packages that are sort of built in, um, but we're sort of ignoring that for now. If you're in the reference page and you click on libraries, there's a bunch of standard libraries you get for free. Uh, uh, the one of the ones we're going to be using today is Servo. So, um, Anyway, that's how you get started there. Jumping back into uh, this example, I've been starting to add some of these servo uh, lines. I'm going to comment those out for a moment. And I'm just going to run this here. You'll see there's some includes we're doing. And let me zoom in a bit so you can see this a little better. 
Uh, so we're, we're, we're setting an LED pin, uh, uh, just like with open frameworks and also with, um, <clears throat> with processing a lot of these creative encoding frameworks. Uh, we're put this pair down there's a setup function. Get this called, called automatically at the beginning once. This allows you to set things like we're setting the pin mode of this LED pin, which is 11, uh, to output. And then uh, allows us to essentially have a loop rather than draw in open frameworks. And you're not actually drawing anything to the screen because there is no screen inherently due to uh, hardware unless you add it. So there's a loop rather. So after the setup gets done, it calls a loop for you. That loop runs uh, as fast as it can, essentially. So, what, what does that all mean? I'm just using this overlay today so it's easier to bounce around. Uh, um, so, what do we want the hardware to be doing? Uh, well, at the beginning, we don't really need it to be doing anything other than showing us that it's working correctly. But so what I have in here right now is di digital write. This is a, a, a Arduino a core Arduino function that allows you to write to an LED pin with, with the value of high or low. Standard pins just have higher lows, binary, on or off, just like the light switch. Pin 11 on the TC just happens to be the LED pin. The LED that's actually on the board, so... I'm going back here, the one that's blinking that's on the board. If we wanted to add another LED, we could put it into one of these other pins. We're not doing that yet. <clears throat> so, so and let me jump back to this website. If you go to the TC Duino website, you can see there's pinouts on the website for, for how to use uh, the device. And, and you'll see that 11 is here at the bottom. It can also be used as an analog, and you'll see these are all labeled as analog. And um, there's also PWM here in here, here and there. PWM is a way to do an analog output versus just the flip of a switch on and off, like the LED has. We're not going to be uh, doing that today, but... <clears throat> okay, so... Let's see. The first thing we might want to do, instead of just flipping the light from on to off, is maybe we want to um, change the rate at which it blinks based on uh, this potentiometer. So, this gives us some pinouts of where these analog uh, inputs are. And what I'm going to do is... I'm going to say... Okay, the, the A th 0 through 10 here is, that's the analog uh, pin reference, so from the 0 to 10. And, and then these other numbers are the, 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 if you're doing like pin mode or something, that, that, would, that would be the number that you'd use there. So let's, let's go two down from that 5 volts, we're using that 5 volts from the ground from the USB to power this whole breadboard. And um, you're just going to take that right to the potentiometer. So let's use 20 here, which is... Analog one, and hopefully I'll have a better luck doing some live coding this week. So if we jump back into here, let's make uh, let's make a a uh, pot pen. No pun intended. And we're going to set the pin mode of the pot pen to input since it's potentiometer. And then in the loop, we're going to create a variable, an integer, that, that tells us what the potentiometer is set to. And these can be 0 to 10, 24. And uh, so I can call that pot value. Then see that equal to, oh, I'm used to check to see, see I did that bracket with that being need. Uh, uh, we're going to set that analog read, and we have to use the analog numbers now because we're going to use one for that, and that's going to bring in that number for us. Okay, that's that number you could be zero to ten twenty three, and we don't want it to delay that long. But so we're going to use that value divided by two. Dot value divided by two. Dot value divided by two. So, so essentially, it's going to delay the blink. The blink is going to, it's going to turn the light on. It's going to delay anywhere from 0 to 5 to 12. And then it's going to set the LED pin to low, turning it off. And it's going to set the, or it's going to wait 
the pi value of 0 to 5, 5, 12, 5, 5 divided by 2. And then it's going to loop again. We're going to read it in and do it all over. So let's see if that works the first time. I will be amazed if it does. So uh, the way this works, so I'm sorry, I'm just going to all over here. When you're on the Arduino, you verify. Make sure that your code is good. Once it's verified, if you hit uh, this upload button, if you have the TNC uh, set up, you're going to have this TNC uh, app to start up. And when you hit that, once it gets done, it's going to program it if you to have the auto set. But otherwise, you have to change some things here and there. So, oh my goodness, it worked the first time. We'll pull this servo out, I don't know, it's much way too. Jump back into here. So, so you'll see we got a similar sort of blink happening, but that's because the potential is in the middle. But as we go, oops, turn the cameras. Focus this down here. So. so As we turn the potentiometer, just slows down. We're all the way at the edge here. On for half a second, on for half a second, and then it repeats. As we turn this up, and now it's faster, four or five times a second. And then as we get closer and closer and closer, it's getting closer to zero. If there's zero delay, obviously, then the light just immediately turns on, turns off. Which eventually is just gonna kind of freak out the Arduino because it doesn't know if it should turn on or not. It's just gonna have it on, pretty much. As we start to slow that down, it starts to blink slower and slower. You see, I'm not turning this very much. So those values change quite fast. Okay. So that's a little bit of proof in the pudding in terms of using a potentiometer to change something. And that's really all that you have to do to get analog values into the microcontroller. It's just way, way easier than it used to be. We had to pull a chip out of a chip loader and run it over to your board and pop it in and you pop off some pieces and you, and you grumble at the universe and start over. Not fun. Okay, so this helps a lot. Now we have a little bit, we know a little bit more about what our code is doing, that these pins are working as they should. And now what we want to do is have this affect the servo somehow, right? So, the servo is not part of the standard Arduino package, so let's actually jump back to the Arduino page. We want to actually go to the servo library. When you use the library, you have to import an H file that references the library, and that gives you a bunch of bits of code. It automatically loads that code onto the, uh, onto the device, and you're kind of off and running um, with that extra bit of code at your disposal. But you, know, you have to actually add it to your project. You have to add that to your project as a a library. You have to actually kind of instantiate it and, uh, and use it. So there's some examples here. We're going to use this write example. It sort of uh, it, uh, uses the attach and read, or uses the attach method at least um, already, so you don't have to learn about that. What attach does is it basically says, hey, we're going to we're going to include the servo library. We're going to make a servo object for the first setup. We're instantiating that as, a, as an object. And then we're going to attach it to a pin. So a pin like on the, the teensy, we're going to pick one of those pins. And then we're going to attach it to that pin. Once we've attached it to that pin, then we can write to that pin. And it will update it. Right? So, so when you write to the servo, it's essentially going to keep track of that as long as, um, as it can. And uh, looks like there's some problems with the audio. Sorry about that. I'll, I'll have to look into that after the show. Um, so uh, 
when you're writing to the servo, it's going to have, uh, at least with most servos, you're going to have 180 uh, degrees that you can turn the servo, right? But, so we have to get a value from 0 to 180 uh, into the servo value here. But we're essentially just going to attach the servo, and then in the in the loop, we're going to write to it versus actually just um, just uh, doing it once in the setup. So let's copy most of this code is already copied over. Let's go back to our Arduino. So we have we're going to declare our servo object. We're also going to make a servo pin, and we're going to set this to try and try nine. Actually, let me see. Two, three, four, five. Up. So I'm going to go five up on the bottom right here on our chart. So one, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do pin six. So that's just the one that I was able to connect. And let me jump back to the video for a second. Back to the focus so you can see. You'll see, you'll see that, that our servo is here. It has three lines coming in. That has, uh, I have this backwards. You can flip this around. And I unplugged it and I plugged it back in incorrectly. Okay. So, so there's three different wires going out of the servo. So much like a, a, the potentiometer over here. You've got your. Sorry. <laughs> uh, you have your power, your ground, that goes up to the servo, and or up to the potentiometer. Let me just talk about the potentiometer real quick. Within the potentiometer, you have three pins. The outside pins are sort of your reference voltage and your ground. You can turn those, you can flip those as you see fit, and it just means that the values will change different based on, uh, you know, whether the power's on one side or the ground's on on, on that side. Uh, if you flip it around, then the values go from 0 to 1023, it would flip to 1023 to 0 uh, as you turn it in the same direction. So, uh, so that's the only reason that you need to put those around. And then the signal that comes out is in the middle here. This is uh, this yellow. And I'm doing this. I'm doing the same thing with the servo. So it has three pins: our power and ground. And then uh, you've got your yellow. That uh, that is the signal, right? And the signal pin. You can see that I'm connecting that up into the into pin six of the board. So. I'm seeing that there's everybody's kind of having problems with audio. I apologize about that. Um, let me just take a quick break here. I'm gonna stop the broadcast for just a moment and I'll try that setting that has the same value. Okay. Uh, hopefully this is better. I'm not sure. If it's not, um, do let me know in the chat and I will try to uh, take a look. At it uh, after the after the stream. Okay, sounds like it's a little better. Might be that um, I had the uh, bit rate for the video set to a thousand. Um, Justin TV seemed to like that. Okay, might be a little too much for um, for you stream. So okay, hopefully this uh, this is better. If it's not, let me know. I'll uh, tweak it after. That might be a little bit high of a bit rate uh, anyway. But I'm being a little greedy. I can. Okay. So uh, last we spoke, we had just hooked up the servo, hooked it up to pin six, and we're going to set the pin mode. This might not be necessary, but it's always good to do this stuff, even if the library is doing it. So it's going to be an output, and then we're going to do that attach business we saw on the website, so we're going to attach the servo to that, but we're going to, instead of pin 9, we're going to attach it to the servo pin, which we've declared as 6 up above. And then um, rather than doing any delaying, we're going to, uh, if we have delays in here, it's going to slow down our, our code at a, as a, at a uh, high level. It's going to slow down everything. We're still going to read in the analog value and we're just not going to do anything with it for the, the moment. We're still going to do a delay of say 50 just so that we're not slamming the servo uh, continuously. And then 
we're going to write the servo with, oh, we are going to use a pot value right away. So we want to, we want to go from 0 to 180, right, because those are the ranges that the, let me get really fun here and use a calculator. All the ones hiding, da. why is the screen not zooming out? Okay. Bring the calculator over here closer. So what we want to do with the calculator is since we have a 0 to 180, there's all sorts of fun things in Arduino that we can use to map ranges from things. But rather than uh, getting too complicated uh, talking about those features, do a little bit of math because, come on, math is fun. So if we have 0, if we have a 0, what we're essentially trying to do is go from 0 to 10, 23. From that value, we're essentially trying to convert that to 0 to 180, right? So that's essentially 180 steps. So what is 1023 divided by 180? It's about 5 times, 5.6 times bigger than, um, than the other range, right? So one very simple way that we could map that range, do that right? Okay, yeah, I did 180 divided by 1023. All right, so 1023 divided by 180, it's about 5.6, 5.7, right? If we do 5.6, if we divide the value coming in from the potentiometer by 5.6, it's going to bring it down into a range that's a little bit closer to 0 to 180, because there's essentially 5.6 units of every step of 180. Um, that the potentiometer is bringing in, if that made any sense whatsoever. So I'm going to change this here, and I'm just going to divide that by, I'm just going to divide it by five, by six. It's going to be a little bit of an overkill, but for the purposes of what we're trying to do, it won't give us a true 180 degrees, but it's enough that we can kind of see what's going on. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to save that yet. But I'm going to verify that. Step back out so you can see what's going on. I'm going to upload that to. Oh, sorry, we need to include the library, which I didn't comment back in. And my notes need to be commented out or deleted. All right, there we go. Let's upload that. And we could hear a happy little servo sound. Jump back to that. So, you can see this, as I'm turning the potentiometer, getting a nice little motion to the servo. Now one of the things that's happening here, there's a, there's a few things now that we have this, which I can't believe that worked the first try, to be honest, because live coding is never that smooth. So one of the things you're hearing is that as I'm turning this, if I'm turning it fast, you can hear it going, eh, 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 eh. and that's because we have that little 50 millisecond delay in there. If we took that out, it'd be a little smoother. But it's also, as you're we're moving this, there's a little bit of a lurch there. When you're holding the servo, you can definitely feel that there's a little bit of a tension, especially when I get right to the edge. It's like, I don't want to go that far. So also, when I let go, it's keeping it there, but the servo occasionally kind of does this little jerk, this little eh, 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 eh. So there's all sorts of little things that we can do to smooth that out. One of the things would be to do a little bit of a conditional check on the, um, on the incoming potentiometer values to essentially make sure that those values have changed uh, by a certain range. And if they haven't, just don't actually set a new value into the um, servo that's gonna it's gonna save power because you're not you're not uh, sending power to the servo all the time the servo is still actually going to be kind of powering itself um, but it's not going to be fighting you all the time uh, it's not going to be it's not going to have that internal crunching noise um, and in general it's just going to help smooth things out. There's a bunch of other things you can do to smooth things out. But um, that's that's essentially the general idea. So from there you could um, set up a whole bunch of, 
of a uh, fun little logic in your code um, that allows you to, you know, imagine having two servos, uh, which all you have to do is just kind of duplicate those servo objects and uh, change how the values are going into them. Uh, it's very easy to essentially uh, control one of these two axis guys. So, uh, with that in mind, I wanted to show you what I'm hoping to do with this uh, long term. Uh, so that was a camera project and what I'll probably be um, talking about in the future. Uh, this is just a little uh, piece of a, a lamp that I've been working on for a while that I want to finish. I'm going to turn off one of my... Oh, that's in the shed. Excellent. Good job, Jeff. Turn off one of my lights here. Show you this. So this is a lamp project I'm working on. And you can see, at least to some degree, the idea behind this. I'll put some paper up here. Maybe this will help show. So the idea behind this is that obviously when these LEDs, these are pretty strong LEDs, these are little LED light strips. They're very similar to the actually the exact same light strips that are being used uh, to power half of uh, this broadcast light situation. Uh, when these lights are focused directly at something, uh, it's very, very bright on the paper. Um, as you turn this, it gets more or less diffused. So you can see there's still light hitting my face, but uh, it's much softer, much less dense shadow, you know, not dense shadows there. Whereas when you really focus that in on me, you can see a lot of those little weird divots on my face and all that. So what I'd like to do with this is essentially get a whole series of these, uh, similar to when you're watching a basketball game and there's all those lovely ads next to the side of the, um, next to the side of the court. I'd like to get a bunch of these in a row, essentially, and allow them to rotate. So. I uh, wanted to be able to in individually control them, uh, but you know, there's no lights in this one yet. This is just the materials. But uh, you know, you might be able to just rotate one. You could rotate it halfway, so you're getting a little bit of direct light. It's also, as you start to rotate the next one, you'll see that that light, that direct light, is starting to bounce off of the wood of the one next to it. So the wood actually. Uh, helps to light the space uh, indirectly as an indirect sort of diffused light uh, as well as it sort of warms the light a little bit. Um, so this is a very very white white uh, versus uh, other qualities of LEDs which are a little bit warmer. So if you wanted a very cool light, a very neutral light you could and a very direct light you could just uh, you know blast these out if you wanted to diffuse things down and make for a little bit more of an atmospheric light, a little bit more of a diffuse light, you could turn some of these or turn all of them sort of halfway uh, to, or at an angle. Anyway, so that's something I'm hoping to play with more uh, in the stream in the uh, upcoming weeks. Um, so you can see how that's progressing. I can document that as well. Uh, and eventually hoping to do a little bit more some iteration on that also because um, you know the the original lights or the they're not really lights some of them are lit uh, but the original shapes that are used for advertising are more of a triangle triangular shape so that uh, when they turn they can be right up next to each other and you can see these are sort of rectangular just because it's easier to construct them um, and that means they can't be quite as close because when they're turning they're gonna get a little bit wider uh, you know, if you have a triangle, the ends of the triangle are the the widest part, you know, the actual, uh, you know, actual structural component is um, the longest part of the triangle. So as you're turning it in the middle, those little points at the outside of the triangle are going to be the, the, the farthest point out. So if it's next to the next item, if you get them equally spaced, then, you know, they won't touch each other. Uh, in the in, when you know when they're being turned, they're not going to slam up against each other. With these guys, since they're essentially uh, you know half of a cube 
or half of a half of a square rather uh, as you're turning them when they're at that sort of 45 degree angle that's when uh, they're at their longest so that means when they're sort of at rest um, you know the difference between this that's the length of my finger pretty much so when this is straight you see you've got about a centimeter of a gap which is kind of cool but uh, it might be a nice might be a nice uh, you know white space sort of thing um, but I'd like to play around with shapes a little bit more in terms of the lamp so so those are two projects I'm using um, servos for right now um, and uh, that's sort of a very simple introduction into uh, how to use them so I'm gonna end there uh, for today uh, just kind of a shorter one for today hopefully uh, I'm hoping to not make these too long uh, as we go forward um, but yeah, does anybody have any questions before I close things up? Looks like I have a two, couple people around. Um, any questions? Any questions? Probably not. I know both of you guys. You both played with servos before, I'm pretty sure. All right, cool. Well, um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them to uh, variableresistance.org or, um, you know, chat with me since I know both of you. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna end here for today. Oh, I do have a question. Why did you use LED panels? That's a very good question. Um, that is actually, um, that is actually a great question, of which I'm hoping to do a follow-up show at some point. Um, the, the basic answer is that, uh, I'm sorry for the person asking the question. I did not realize that you're asking that there's a little bit of a delay um, between my speaking and the broadcast, so I'll have to I'll have to ask questions and uh, and then uh, wait a little bit longer next time. Um, yeah, so the the basic answer is that LEDs sort of afford um, a bit a bit uh, of a better uh, DC current. Uh, so, like you saw with the LED on the Teensy before, um, that's a DC voltage, it's an on-off voltage, uh, versus an AC voltage like a light bulb, which is actually a, a sine wave of voltage uh, slamming from one pin to the next, or one, um, you got the two, the two, uh, two fingers going into the socket, um, well, not your fingers hopefully. Um, so with an AC voltage, uh, it's a much more complicated circuit to control that. And now that LEDs are becoming um, easier to, to power and get bright light from, uh, and there's lots of bulbs on the market that are doing that. A lot of those LED bulbs are actually AC LEDs. They're doing the conversion inside of the bulb itself to AC. Uh, but these light strips are simple, uh, very, very simple 12 volt DC uh, connections. So by using a transistor that steps up the voltage coming out of the Teensy from 5 volts to 12 volts, um, and also sort of allowing its own average uh, to hit the light bulbs versus uh, powering it directly through the microcontroller, um, I can actually uh, not only change the rotation of the lamps, but also change the quality of the light, change the intensity of the light. So um, that's going to give a little, you know, if rather than it just rotating, if uh, when you turn it on it rotates while the, the light bulbs are slowly dimming up, um, then you know you can sort of make that a little sexier, uh, perhaps. Uh, the other thing that uh, it, uh, well, as in a comparison, in theater, uh, all of the, all the dimming of lights that's happening uh, in those sorts of systems, uh, you know, that's thousands and thousands of dollars going into, uh, you know, complicated dimmer systems and things like that. Uh, with much, much uh, higher uh, temperature lights. And um, so I'm trying to avoid that as much as possible. There's a little bit of heat that comes off of these guys, but uh, it's not nearly nearly to the level that um, uh, even this light bulb uh, behind me here that's uh, helping light the show uh, has. So that's that's the main reason. You'll see the same power that powers this one strip is also powering 
can't quite see that on that camera, but let me jump back over to here. You'll see this is a whole strip of these same uh, bulbs, or same LEDs uh, on the strip. That same uh, power supply is, uh, is essentially uh, you know, lighting this, this side angle, which is kind of giving me a simulated outdoor light, since I have a real outdoor light over there too, uh, to simulate it more helps to give a little bit more balance uh, to the, to the, I don't know, some people would argue with that since you have two different temperatures of light. I go back and forth on that. I think it kind of makes for um, something nice. Uh, let's see what else we got in the chat here. Um, yeah, so uh, I, I do want to follow up in, um, in upcoming weeks on um, using, using uh, light in photography. Uh, uh, for sure. Um, one of the things that I'm hoping to uh, talk about is doing uh, extreme macro photography um, using a, um, well, one second. Somehow forgot the word tube for a second. Uh, using one of these guys, which is just a very simple kit. You can get it for any type of uh, SLR. Uh, this is for a Canon style uh, mount, and you essentially there's a bunch of different sizes of these all together. If you use all of them in conjunction, it makes for some crazy, almost microscopic macro photography. But you can take a small ring or a medium ring, and then uh, connect them to these end pieces. This piece would uh, connect to whatever lens you're using. There's certain lenses that work better than others. And then you have a piece on this side that connects to the camera. And when you have both of those in conjunction, um, it's essentially uh, extending the distance from the lens and the sensor, uh, which allows you to do some really, really close up stuff. So I'm hoping to use LEDs uh, for that very purpose to do some stuff with. Um, I've been wanting to play around with uh, a dye and water. Uh, at extremely close, uh, doing some video of that sort of uh, movement, as well as um, things like very small beams and um, particles spinning in a viscous uh, solution. So uh, hopefully I will be able to do that on the show at some point as well, especially since we have this nice setup with the camera where I can sort of show that stuff live coming in directly from here. Um, so yeah, stay tuned on that. and. Uh, Hopefully that will be uh, that will be something coming. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna end here uh, for today. Oh, it sounds like there's uh, another request for doing some uh, documentation on um, how to how to do photography on uh, projects, project photography. Um, that's definitely something I can spend some time on too. Um, so yeah. I think I will end here for today, unless there's any other questions, which I'll, I'll give the proper delay for. <laughs> um, otherwise, yeah, uh, feel free to email me, uh, j at variableresistance.org, or go to the site. Um, there's comments are turned off, but on the initial post, you're welcome to um, leave things that you'd like to hear about uh, in the future, um, as well as... Um, uh, what you liked, what you didn't like. Uh, you can also go to Twitter, variable res, um, leave comments there, um, and yeah, I'll be back next week. All right, uh, thanks guys. Have a good week. <laughs>